welcome back to Kang TV. I'm Kate. And I'm Tyler. Get ready to pack the stands again tomorrow night at Belby College as the boys and girls basketball teams play for the right to advance in the state tournament. The boys take on either Ferndale or Kennewick High Schools at 6 p.m. while the girls take on Snohomish at 8 p.m. Wear your Kings gear and get loud. The girls gymnastics teams is headed to state. They'll compete at Sammamish High School tomorrow starting at 3.15 p.m. Join us in the comments tomorrow morning before school to send off the gymnastics team and cheer on the basketball teams. Congratulations to boys swim and dive team who placed sixth at state. Kang swimmers set two new school records in the 100 free and the 200 free relay. Congratulations to Matthew Lee, Frederick Larson, Isaiah Lim, and Josh Olson. All eight athletes who competed this weekend advanced to the finals and scored points for LDUB. We celebrate all of you. The LDUB dance team's final competition before district takes place Saturday at Capitol High School in Olympia. Turning to spring sports, starting with boys soccer. The final open field session takes place today at 3.30 to 5 p.m. at the field. Shin guards are required. The final information meeting is tomorrow at 3 p.m. in room 167. Tryouts run from Monday, February 28th through Wednesday, March 2nd. Players must be fully cleared on final forms in order to try out. Visit www.lakewashingtonhighschoolsoccer.com for more info. Monday is the first practice for boys and girls track and field. Meet at 3.10 p.m. on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, and at 1.15 p.m. on Wednesdays. Track and field is a no-cut sport, and everyone gets to participate in most track meets. There are 18 different track events to check out, and you don't need to have experience to join the team. Practices last 60 to 90 minutes, and the boys and girls teams practice together. Interested in Kings baseball or fast pitch softball? Join a preseason meeting for the baseball this afternoon at 3.05 in the main gym. A preseason meeting for softball takes place this afternoon at 310 in the library. The girls' tennis team holds its first practice on Monday. Interested players must register through final forms. Stay tuned for more announcements about spring sports. Now, here are the other headlines. Over the weekend, Governor Ainsley announced the indoor mask mandate will be lifted on March 21st, but what does that mean for schools? Kang TV's assistant news director, Drew, sat down with Mr. Schultz, an LDUB associate principal and head of our school's COVID safety team, to talk more about this. Hi, Mr. Schultz. Thanks for joining us. Um, could you tell us some more about the governor's announcement about the mask mandate lifting on March 21st? Sure. So many of you may have known that the governor announced last week that the mask mandate for schools and other indoor facilities will be lifted on March 21st. What this means for individual schools is that that determination, whether or not we lift the mask mandate, or not is left up to the individual school districts. So the state has said, yes, you don't need masks. Now the individual school districts get to determine whether or not they want to continue to have masks right. or they want to get rid of masks as mm -hmm. well. Got it. Yep. And so how does this exactly affect the masking situation in schools? So that's a great question. Yeah. So one of the things that uh, our school district will have to determine is whether or not we want to follow the governor's mandate. Um, I personally am the COVID supervisor here, so mm -hmm. I implement what the district tells us to do. Um, I'm also on the COVID working group, so we meet Wednesday for two hours a day to determine the pathway forward. So we haven't met since the governor's announcement, obviously, because we were on break. Right. So our first meeting will be tomorrow. And at that meeting, I imagine we will be spending a great deal of time talking about what the implementation process looks like, how we are going to move forward, if we're going to move mm -hmm. forward, with that eliminating the masks. Yeah. Yeah. So once, if we do lift the mask right. mandate in schools, what can we do to stay healthy and safe? So one thing that you can do, obviously, to stay healthy and safe is to not come to school if you're feeling sick or ill. Mm -hmm. That way you can stay home and isolate and not potentially spread COVID around. Um, number two, ensure that you are taking proper mitigation methods, right? We are moving from a pandemic stage to what they're calling an endemic stage, which is why they're talking about lifting the mask mandate which means that as we move through the school day, we want to make sure that we're still following the safety guidelines that we have been put mm -hmm. in place before, minus masks. So make sure that you're trying to maintain physical distancing with your friends, make sure that you're making good choices around school, you're making um, good safe choices while you're in the classroom, coughing on people's, you know, that kind of a thing, mm -hmm. to make sure that we're following all of those steps. Right. And so, what if students would like to continue masking even after the mandate is lifted? So that's also a really good point, one that we're gonna be discussing tomorrow. And what we need to understand is that some students and some staff members 
for example, may not feel comfortable getting rid of the mask. They may feel like, hey, I still want to wear it. I still want to be safe. Mm -hmm. I still want to take that extra step. Um, so what we as a school community have to do is respect their choice, respect their right to wear the mask. Don't call them out. Don't mock them for wearing a mask. Individuals get to make their own safety and health choices and not wearing a mask is one choice. Wearing a mask is another choice. Mm -hmm. They're not right or wrong. They're just what people feel comfortable with. So we have to understand that students and staff may choose to continue to wear masks and that's totally fine. And we accept that and move on. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And is there anything else you would like to add to this conversation? I don't think, um, well, there, there's, a, there's a couple of things. Until the <laughs> mask mandate is lifted on the 21st, we still need to continue to wear our masks above our nose, tight to our face, mm. not down here, not below our mouth, um, because A, that is a safety measure, and it is to this day the best way to prevent the spread of COVID. Two, it's still the mandate. We still have to wear the masks in class. And we, in three, we're not at March 21st, and our district hasn't come out and said, hey, you're not, you're not gonna, right. you don't need to wear masks anymore. Yeah. So yeah, so they just, just continue to wear your mask, continue to be safe, continue to make good choices that we see every day in our school around mm -hmm. mask wearing. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, you bet. Yeah. Back to you. This reminder, do not open the side doors for anyone, not even your best friends. This is a security requirement. Everyone needs to use the main entrances. Now, a follow up to the conversation we had earlier this year about sexual harassment and sexual assault in schools and communities. Kang TV's Emma sat down again with Mariana and Scout from the Feminist Club to update their progress to make LDUB a safe environment for everyone. My name is Emma and I'm here today with some members from our own LDUB Feminist Club. Why don't you introduce yourselves? Hi, my name is Mariana. I'm the president of Feminist Club. And my name is Scout of Spain and I am the vice president of Feminist Club. So I know a couple months ago, LDUB Feminist Club held a protest outside the school for awareness surrounding sexual assault and things like that. Um, we were just wondering, what have you guys been working on since that protest has happened? Yeah, so we've been working with a large group of students all the way to district board members. And um, basically, we've been working on this reporting tool for sexual assault, bullying, harassment, and intimidation. And what's really great about this reporting tool is that it has both an anonymous and a non-anonymous reporting kind of column. So um, what's great about the anonymous part of the reporting tool is that there are four different ways that you can report. Um, you can report email, text, phone call, and just over the web. And so it's extremely accessible and in no way will the school be able to or will uh, track your phone number or email or anything like that. So it's basically for informational purposes um, and for people to feel more comfortable sharing their stories. Uh, and then the non-anonymous uh, part is, again, there's four different ways to communicate this, as Mariana has said. Um, and it's a little bit more tricky because of the amount of information that you're willing to give really kind of leads where your case is going to go. If you give a lot of information, um, it may fall into the category where it's mandatory reporting and the school has to report it to law enforcement. Right. Um, or you can give a little bit less information, but you still want the school to know that it happened. Um, and then they can provide safety to you with uh, schedule changes or changes in like hallways and anything right. like that. Um, and it's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and one one misconception mm -hmm. is that um, you know mandatory reporting happens a lot, and um, you know there are various particular cases in which mandatory reporting happens, and you can talk to the school about what it, what mandatory reporting means, mm -hmm. um, because there are I mean again there's very specific cases in which that happens, mm -hmm. right. and so people can get very scared about reporting and telling their story. Yeah. Um, so I would just highly suggest looking it up and, yeah. and doing a little bit of research um, about your rights as a student. Yeah. Another great thing about the non-anonymous is that um, you're able to kind of how you want to report it, it can be very individual to yourself. You're able to communicate to the school that uh, I want to be followed up every day about right. what my investigation is, right. what's happening with it, right. what's happening with my story, what's happening to the other person. Or you can say, I'm giving you this information don't contact me, right. don't say anything, just there it is, you know. So it really is dependent on where you are in your mindset and what you want. 
It's right. completely up to you, yeah. Right. Something is better than nothing, definitely, if you're anxious about reporting. Right. Yeah. And, like, this definitely relates so much to a lot of our demands when it came to the protest. We wanted to have reporting be accessible. It's on the website. Um, it's very easily accessible on the website. Mm -hmm. um, there are so many different ways that you can report, um, and it can be anonymous or non-anonymous, which is another demand that we had for the mm -hmm. protest. Um, also, um, uh, administration has worked with us a lot on this, which is something that we also demanded. Mm -hmm. um, also, the language is really, really nice. It's not as robotic as some of the other documents on the website. Yeah. Um, so you really feel like you're supportive when you're reading these documents, and there's a lot of information as well. Um, so, I mean, there's just, I mean, I could go on and on. There's so <laughs> many reasons why this relates to almost every single demand that we've had yeah. on the protest. Right. Although this is not all that we're doing. Right. Yeah. It's great to see some action coming from these demands too. Exactly. Yeah. So what have you guys been working on specifically in Feminist Club and dis discussing at your meetings? Yeah, so, um, so like kind of every other week we kind of talk about the reporting tool. Um, so we have Miss Subergreen specifically has been really involved. Mm -hmm. So she comes basically every single Feminist Club meeting. Mm -hmm and talks to us about the reporting tool and like from an administration standpoint how can she help and what she knows and we even have district um, officials come into our feminist club meetings and they also hear out kind of what we think about the reporting tool so um, definitely the district is aware of this and this might even become a district wide thing in a couple of years so um, that's really critical but we also talk about, we don't kind of neglect other options. We talk um, a lot about, you know, future looking. What, are we, what do we want LDUB to look like in like two years from now, one year from now, or like a couple of months from now beyond this reporting tool? Right. Yeah, as well as how it's going to be uh, just streamlined into our education yes. and not just a one-off. Yeah, it's very important. It's, it's going to become our part of our school culture yeah right right that's right. huge yeah so what do you guys plan to implement for next year and the coming years in order for this to be a consistent thing yeah so definitely we've been talking a lot in feminist club as well as separate meetings that we have been having and with uh, along with the super green and other stuff like that but uh we're planning on getting stuff like uh peer counseling hopefully in a couple of years working with a company that can educate uh, students uh, on how to work with other students about mental issues or anything that they're dealing with um, as well as like student shared trauma groups potentially at our school um, and then there's there's one more <laughs> um, and then I mean I they, yeah there's there's a lot of there's a lot of different ones um, I, I mean, and we also talk a lot about like sex education in Feminist Club as well and like improving our sex mm -hmm. education, but also like district wide. Um, so that's also something that we were thinking about. How do we prevent the problem from happening in the first place? Mm -hmm. And how do we make sure that, you know, things like mandatory reporting, which is something that we just talked about, is, um, you know, our, our students are educated on. So definitely look forward to kind of more interviews with us in the future yeah. about mandatory reporting and sexual assault and uh, sex education mm -hmm. things that we really want students to know but unfortunately aren't really aware of that was the other one mm -hmm. um having a grade se separated oh, education right. yes. around yeah. sexual uh sexual like education and assault and um consent mm -hmm. um and then like i said going up through the grade levels getting it a little bit more uh, like serious and extreme and a little mm -hmm. bit more complex in later years. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that's a big thing that we've been talking about in groups. Right. Yeah. And I, I, I don't want to stray too far away from the reporting tool. Um, I talk, We talked about accessibility. We talked about our demands. Um, so just to close it off, I really wanted to talk about where it is on the website, particularly where you can um, get access to it. So it's going to be... Um, I mean, there's several different ways that you can find it on the website. It's not just one place. But if you just look up LWSD.org or LWHS, um, there's a little safety concern mm -hmm. link. Link. Just click on that, and that's where you're gonna, it's going to take you right to the reporting tool. Yeah. So super accessible. We also have QR codes all over the school. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can just uh, take your phone out, 
and take a picture of it. Highly suggest you take a picture of it for future reference so that you can send it to your friends or just whenever you need it, yeah. you can use it. And that there's, they're going to be, like, specifically, they're going to be on the TV screens. Yes. There'll be some in the counseling office. I know some teachers' rooms will actually have mm -hmm. little printouts of them. Um, and I'm sure you'll be able to find them in the bathrooms as well. Yeah. Um, so a lot of very private areas where you can take a photo of it. Yeah. That's great. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah. Here are the other announcements for this week. PE makeups have begun. If you are absent from your PE class, please sign up for PE makeups during Wednesday root times. This is how you earn your points for excused absences. Remember, sign up for PE makeups in Flexi, not with your PE teacher. Be sure to keep working on your grade level lessons in Zello. Questions and accessing Zello can be directed to counseling. New students, please reach out to your counselor on their screen for assistance. Seniors need to be mindful to get their Zello lessons done so they can graduate on time. The second round of Student Life Yearbook Surveys is going out during homeroom today. Please take them. The topics are homecoming and homecoming alternatives, style and fashion, student teacher lookalikes, student musicians, music and playlists, and student jobs and volunteering. Congratulations to music students who represented LDEB at WMEA All-State Honor Ensembles over the weekend at Yakima. Rosa Choi and Alison Rands, All-State Symphony Orchestra, Mira Hempy, All-State Treble Choir, Eric Larson and Maddox Eunuch, All-State Concert Band, Mariana Schumann, All-State Chamber. The, di the Diversity Action Team, DAT, meets Mondays after school in room 167. The next meeting is February 28th. Join them in planning for an upcoming day of social justice, Women's History Month, Zen Garden Building, Day of Silence, and more. The Speech and Debate Club is up and running. Meetings take place in room 167, Fridays after school. Check them out to learn the art of speech and tools of debate. Robotics Club is hosting a fundraiser today at Trace Hermanos Restaurant in Kirkland. Pick up a flyer in the front office or print that out a screen grab and take it to the restaurant to support LW Robotics. Green Team meets Tuesday mornings starting at 7.30 a.m. in room N261. Drop in to help them plan their next project. Welcome another club at LW. Badminton Club meets Friday mornings from 7 to 7.50 and welcome you to drop in any time during this time frame to play a set or two before school starts. All skill levels are welcome, including beginners. That's it for this week's Kang TV News. Thanks for watching. I'm Kate. And I'm Tyler. Remember to pack the stands at Bellevue College tomorrow night to cheer on the Kangs boys and girls basketball teams. The boys play at 6 and the girls at 8. Have a great weekend and Go, Go Kangs! Kangs.